Hey everyone. Give me a th okay, I see waving and you guys can hear me okay. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear us okay. Okay, so we're outside today. So we're trying some new technology things. I don't, do you want to come over here, Dave? No. I uh, know. <laughs> Actually, if it's too hot, if you want to wait, I got some intro stuff. Yeah, so you decide. Okay. Wonderful. So, so we have the grill. Today's vegan grilling, you guys. And you're like, this is real world. All of these classes we've told you for the last 14 weeks. We've been in my teeny tiny kitchen in our condo. And now we're on our teeny tiny uh, deck on our condo in real life. And we have a small little girl. And we're going to show you how we grill things. We're very excited. But I wanted to do a brief intro in case some of you are new. Um, my name is J.L. Fields, and I am a vegan cookbook author, and I run the Colorado Springs Vegan Cooking Academy, which has been on hiatus due to the pandemic. So we've been teaching free classes every Sunday right here on Zoom and later on YouTube. So hello to you on YouTube. Those of you on YouTube should understand that I talk to my people here on Zoom throughout it. That might be a little annoying. And speaking of that, you all know what I love. On the bottom of the Zoom screen, you see a chat bubble. And if you click that, a chat will open up. And I'd love for me to for you to tell us where you're coming in or tuning in today. So we've got Florida and Colorado and Virginia and oh, there's Sharon in Colorado Springs. Oh, we got a couple of people. Hi, Renee. We've got Arizona, Atlanta, California, Vermont. Uh, we love we love that we're coming from everywhere, you guys. So welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, this is our weekly vegan cooking class. Dave was here last week for vegan um, meaty vegan cooking. And the video's on YouTube now, and it's on my website. And today we're going to talk about grilling, and we're actually going to use some of that seitan we made last week. But a couple of announcements before we get started. Um, one, I uh, did a, the random drawing of the giveaway on Facebook for a copy of the Vegan Baking for Beginners book. And the winner is Monica Wilinski. And I um, shared that on Facebook as well. And so for those of you who are new to this, my book, Vegan Baking for Beginners, is coming out. This is me trying to send you things in the chat with my weird little setup here um, <laughs> uh, outside, but I'm gonna make it work, I swear. Uh, and so Vegan Baking for Beginners is coming out on July 7th. The next free online weekly cooking class is actually not gonna be weekly. We're taking next weekend off for the long three-day weekend. It'll be July 12th, I'll be in Illinois. Dave will be here. We're actually going to do, my sister and I are gonna make date pudding uh, for my book, which is kind of like a cake. And we're going to veganize um, some of my dad's favorite uh, cookies. So I'm going to show you how to, with, in vegan baking, how you can veganize some of your family favorites. And then this guy is going to tune in. This is my husband, Dave Burgess. And he is going to be here in Colorado Springs making his, the cheesy patch uh, green chili biscuits. So we'll be from Illinois and Colorado teaching that class. So we're very excited about that. And it's a book party. So I might wear a tiara. And I'm definitely going to drink something sparkly, which then reminds me. So then the next thing I should tell you is today I'm drinking from my Burrowing Owl koozie. And the Burrowing Owl is a vegan dive bar uh, and restaurant here in Colorado Springs, 100% vegan. And this is their pride um, koozie. So I want to say happy pride to everybody who's celebrating it. And uh, this is a New Belgium ale, tangerine. New Belgium is in Colorado. And um, we've got some Burrowing Owl fans. Awesome. And then what else did I want to say? Oh, my t-shirt today. Hello, I'm Veganlicious. Um, so I'm going to drop a link. Uh, there's a company called Redefined Your Mind. My friend Demetria is the owner of it. It's a black owned business. So you can go online right now and get awesome message wear hemp uh, design. So really, really soft. And they actually have a really cool hemp mask that I ordered. It's purple. It's gorgeous. So I'm going to drop a link for... Um, Redefine your mind right now. I hope that you will support my friend and get a really cool shirt. And then I was going, um, two things I want to tell you. So you guys know, somebody, some of you have already um, tipped me today. So I want to thank you that for that. I'm just going to drop the link now. Um, if people want to share it, if other people ask for it, that's great. Uh, you guys have been leaving me tips every Sunday. Really appreciate it. It's helping me keep my, my classes going for you all. Um, and as a result, I'm also going to start doing pay what you can classes starting in August. I'm um, actually last week of July. So if you need a free class, it's free for you. If you want to pay five bucks, 10 bucks, whatever you want. But today um, I shared this on Facebook and I just said I would mention it here. Um, if you don't want to tip me today and instead you'd like to do something to help um, to help the black community. I was listening to this uh, podcast about uh, two women who are trying to do a digital version of the green book which is a way for, um, 
for black folks to travel around the country and to be out in open spaces, uh, free of violence and free of fear. And they have a GoFundMe campaign. And so I'm gonna drop a link for that. We um, made a little donation earlier today. Uh, and I just think it's a really cool idea. And I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. I was out walking in an open space while I was listening to it. And it probably took me a good 15 minutes in that conversation or in listening, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not even aware of my own privilege right now, like that this is not an issue for me. And it was just a reminder of how much more work I have to do and how much I wanna to try to do good in the world. So if you wanna join me with that, um, I just dropped the link. I hope I dropped the link. I did. Okay, so now it is grill time. Um, first off, you might as well, since you can see it. My husband, Dave, works for Navakai, which is here in Colorado Springs, is a, um, it's an IT firm, and they have a band, and Dave's in the band, but look, this is their world tour. Colorado Springs, Colorado Springs, Colorado Springs. Yeah, so anyway, <laughs> someday, well, maybe a little uh, Austin, Texas. We'll work on it. We might go to Denver. Okay. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, we're really going to branch out. Or maybe Palmer Lake, or maybe Monument, or maybe Fountain. It could happen. Okay, so today, what we're going to do, this class, I always say it might not take an hour, you know, whatever, you know me, but we're grilling today, and the grilling really shouldn't take that long, but I want to tell you what's on the menu and what we have planned for you. So uh, we are going to, remember the seitan we made last week? We actually took, uh, we, we saved it from last week and we're gonna do two different things with it today. One, we just sliced it into steaks. So we're gonna grill seitan steak. So this is homemade seitan. We're also gonna grill tofu because we know some of you don't eat seitan. But the marinade is the same. And actually, why don't we uncover it just so that they can see it. So we are using a sambal, uh, really spicy, marinade from my book, The Vegan Air Fryer, that I use for my sambal um, tempeh. But we have been marinating the seitan steaks and the tofu in it. Look at how thick and chunky it is. So these are the two huge seitan steaks, and then we've got our tofu steaks. So that's uh, one thing that's on the menu, and I believe you're going to start with all of them. Start with the seitan. seitan and one of the tofu steaks to make sure it doesn't Okay, and can you guys hear Dave okay? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear Dave okay. Okay, um, so we're not sure if the, how the tofu is going to stick, and we're doing this on purpose because we want you to like kind of think about these things. Some foods do well directly on the grill, and others maybe not so much, right? So um, the seitan we feel very comfortable with. It's very thick, it's very dense, and Dave has already wiped down the grill with, um, oh, doesn't that sound amazing? Um, He's already wiped down the grill with a little olive oil, so that should help with the sticking. But what we're actually gonna do is put one slab of tofu on the grill, and if it looks like it's gonna be problematic, then we're just gonna put a little foil. Um, I know that'll freak out some of you who don't like your aluminum foil to touch your food, um, that you don't have to eat it, we do. Um, and we'll see what happens. So um, hopefully that this won't stick too much. Now we did wanna show you a couple of things that are very helpful for vegan grilling, um, and those are inserts, baskets that you can put on your grill. Because some food might stick, which is problematic, but other foods might actually fall through the grates, right? Because today we are going to, uh, mar or I've marinated some summer squash, some yellow squash with onion and red pepper and basil and oregano and a little kosher salt and balsamic vinegar and a little olive oil. So when it's time to grill it, we're actually going to just transfer that into this and this basket will sit in the grill, and that's a way to not lose those yummy veggies, right? So that's one thing. Oh, okay, perfect. Um, and so that's one thing I wanted to tell you about. Now, you may have noticed we have a very small grill. We used to have a really big grill, and then we could barely be out here on the, um, actually, I guess I'll show you just so you can understand what I'm talking about. This is my deck. This is it. This is it. We have our little couch, we have our chairs, so we don't have a whole lot of space. So for us, a smaller grill makes sense for a couple of reasons. One is, I'm moving that because that's probably really annoying. I'm sorry about that, you guys. Um, let's try that. <laughs> uh, so um, yeah, it is what it is. You guys know what you're getting into. I'm a hack, whatever. Okay, so um, so for you know, get a grill that makes sense for you, and it's just the two of us. But you'll see. As far as space goes, we did make a point to get a three burner grill. And what that means is that we can have three different temperatures going. Um, so if some things, if we're holding them, we do have a little rack up here that we can hold some of the food. But Dave is anticipating, how long are you anticipating the seitan steaks to take? I think the seitan steaks, so with the burners, there's a, a tendency to always want to have it up really high. Um, and... It's kind of like your oven. You, you, you're, going, you're going to want medium heat most of the time. So I cranked it up when I turned it on to get the heat up. But now I've got two burners on medium, 
I've got one burner on low and you can move food around uh, as you need. Probably 15 to 20 minutes for the seitan, okay. I think. Are you keeping um, track or should I be? Ish. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, we probably put those on Five minutes. a few minutes ago. Okay. Um, the vegetables will do over the over the low uh, low Shush. heat. You're gonna go in the bedroom, um, and <laughs> this is Harry. Um, we're going to uh, the tofu probably over medium, uh, but towards the end, I'm gonna we're gonna stuff a poblano pepper um, with some of the ground seitan and a little violet mozzarella. Uh, they didn't have jack, so we're using mozz. Um, and we're going to. Uh, grill that up. Um, what I did with the pepper here, and I'll show you real quick. I did slice it. Uh, I pulled out most of, and there's still some seeds randomly in there, but I got most of the core out, uh, opened it up, and then I'll close it up with some uh, toothpicks uh, when I put it on the grill. Uh, but we'll do that as well. Um, and then we're also going to grill up some pineapple at the very end uh, to be a nice side uh, for the steaks uh, and the tofu. Um, and in the fridge inside, um, oh, yeah. I did I did make a um, sauce for the seitan and the tofu um, based uh, with uh, what did I do? There was jalapeno, there was onion, there was basil, uh, apple cider vinegar, and olive oil. And you now I purposely left the seeds, much to JL's chagrin, in the jalapenos. I didn't seed them. It's hot. Um, sorry. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> I'm going to eat it anyway. Um, now, if you pull the seeds out, a lot of the heat goes away. So, um, we have very differing levels of tolerance for spicy stuff. So, um. So what's next? So how are you, do you want to check on the tofu to see yeah. what, like. And actually, this is going to go pretty well, pretty quickly, I think. So pardon me turning my back on you here. You can go over it this way a little bit. No, we're fine. Don't no, we're going to be good. Oh, it came down a little bit. Oh, it's because there's one okay. uh, You're sliced not worried? off piece. No. So do you want to put the others on then? Yep. 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 Now tell me, Dave, there's some very chunky, delicious looking marinade on there. Yeah. Are you flipping this? I will flip them. We'll lose some of it. Um, so yeah, we're going to lose some of the marinade when I flip this. Um, it'll have to be cleaned up later. Um, and that's okay. That's me. Yeah. Um, Hi. <laughs> I don't clean. No, she um, doesn't. Uh, it's really it's, not my thing. It's really not. Um, just I think her, aren't I? You're something. Maybe uh, we can use some of that to spread on it when it's. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, additional tofu's on. Um, yeah. So, true story. Um, you got to clean your grill on a regular basis. Not just the grates, but you've got to clean the. The bottom. Uh, you're going to get oil, you're going to get bits of food, you're going to get a lot of stuff. Um, the reason I bring this up is last summer um, there was an incident with our old grill. Um, a fire extinguisher was involved. For the first time ever? For the first time ever. Turns um, out it's good we had a fire extinguisher. Um, because I could not, it, it, the oil caught on the bottom, uh, caught fire, and uh, I disconnected the gas. I got, got the, the propane tank away, could not get the fire out. Yeah, we had to destroy our uh, grill with the uh, fire extinguisher. Uh, so clean your grill, please. Um, good, good advice. Yes. Um, are there any, right now, just so you know, I dropped a link to the seitan recipe that we used last week. It's on my website. But for those of you who have my books, I think I have a seitan recipe in almost every book. And so when I say seitan steak, if you remember last, year, last week when we were making vegan meat, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the process of making the seitan isn't when it's ready to serve. So I'm not going to make the seitan, whether it's in the pressure cooker or if I'm steaming it and then serve it, then we're going to do something with it, right? So we um, had it this week. What did we have it with? Tacos? I think we made tacos or so. I can't even remember. It was on Instagram, I think. Um, I don't remember. I don't remember. But we did... Um, so, so then we're going to do something with it. So it's already cooked, but we want it to be uh, warm. So actually, I'm going to go get the digital thermometer at 1.2. So that when I'm using seitan or we're using seitan, marinating it is going to kind of change the flavor. We're using a really spicy, tomato-y uh, sort of 
coating almost, which is this sambal, really spicy. I mean, a little vinegar, I think we added too, and some mm -hmm. garlic and some onion. Uh, so you just cut the size that you want. So we just did a couple of pieces, a couple slabs of the seitan, and then we'll check the internal temp, and we're just looking for over 165 degrees, and um, that probably shouldn't be too hard to get. And so um, you can do that with uh, any kind of seitan. Now, usually when you buy seitan, it's already sort of cut up in pieces. So what you could do, if you wanted to have, let's say, a grilled steak sandwich, you could take a basket like this, marinate some of that uh, purchased seitan, like Upton's has it, I think um, Tofurky might have it, Pacific does, and then seitan, or, or, uh, marinate it in whatever you want, but then put it in this basket, and then just get mm -hmm. a nice hoagie roll or some of your sourdough bread and then just scoop that on, you still grilled seitan, you still have the same flavor, you just don't have a slab of it. Um, but it is a great way when you're making seitan and you're like, oh my gosh, I made this huge batch of this, and now what am I gonna do? Well, as I mentioned last week, and I'll just continue to encourage you to do, freeze it so you can use it later. If you freeze it like a roast, you can do it on the mandolin like we did, really thin slices, and you can use it for sandwiches, or you can pull it out of the freezer and after it thaws, cut it into real two beautiful slabs of um, oh my gosh, the grill mark. Hmm, trying to think how much room I have on this to bring this over so you can see. Wish me luck. Um, let me not, I don't know, I'm going to try not to, um, let's see. Dave, can you move your arm for a minute? I don't know how much you guys can see of it. Anyway, you got to trust me. It's amazing. Um, okay, so before, I, I just asked you if you had questions, and then of course I didn't allow you to ask questions. So um, <laughs> Dave, if you, um, is there anything you want to get on the grill right now yep. that you want to talk about? Yep, yep. I'm going to do, so um, I'm going to put this pepper together. Um, like I said, I cored it, seeded it, split it. A um, couple pieces of uh, oh, there we go. That's ever. A couple pieces of wildlife moths. Again, they didn't have uh, jack, uh, which was a bummer. But just gonna lay those in there. Here, have that. Okay. Um, mm. And then some ground seitan uh, that we just put in the food processor. And I'm gonna load that up. Mm. Do, do, do. And Linda asked if the steak recipe is in the book. No, and hopefully what I just explained will help, which is make any seitan roast and then just slice it into um, what you want to, you know, like w whatever, like one ounce, two ounce slab of seitan yeah. and then marinate it in a way. I mean, heck, you can even use A1 sauce. A1 is vegan and you could just marinate it in A1. Ooh, fancy Dave. I know. This is what I do from watching. Do you already have the seitan in there? Oh, yeah. Wow. Honey, I'm on it. Wow, you really are. Totally on it. Okay, so a couple uh, toothpicks just to hold it together. Um, make sure stuff's crammed in there pretty good. And I'm just going to lay that on the grill. Like so. Like that. Now, what we'll do mm. as things start to, oh, it's already starting to blister. That's awesome. Um, so I know. It smells so good. I wish we had smell a vision <laughs> So what I'll do, and the nice thing about our grill, not all grills have it, is that top shelf in there. Um, once things are done, I'll just move them off the heat. Uh, they'll stay warm, but they won't cook as much. And then, um, are you eating the leftovers? <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> um, and then I'll, I can also make room for that basket when we put the veggies on. Uh, we'll put the veggies on and the uh, pineapple last, because uh, they're not going to take very long. How uh, long do you think up. the uh, squash will take? It's a yellow squash, summer squash. Oh, probably five to seven minutes-ish. Okay. Great. Ish. I don't know what temperature this grill is oh. at. Oh, um, is it, oh, it doesn't tell you. No, some grills do have a gauge. Ours are the one that I destroyed with the fire extinguisher. Um, uh, and when I say destroyed, uh, the reason it's destroyed is depending on the contents of the fire extinguisher, they're, they're, they're irritants. Uh, and I'd have to take the entire thing apart and somehow clean it and get rid of all the particles before I cooked with it again. And I really didn't want to do that. So um, we threw it out. I have an idea. Oh, right on. Why don't you hang it? Can we hang that from the bottom, please? Uh, that's sure. Why not? Or should I just, just set it on the Yeah. See what happens. Okay. So. Maybe smarty. we'll find out. Um, we'll see what the temperature is. Okay, any questions? Um, let's see, can you do the grilling for an electric grill or is this mm -hmm. the kind you have? This is a gas grill. Um, and so do you mean like, I know they have some of those outdoor like uh, George Foreman's or do you mean like indoors? Um, can you do grilling? And the answer is yes. The time might vary based on how hot the grill gets. Um, Let's see, I keep getting private messages from people and then I can't write to everybody. Let's see. Um, what kind of pepper was that, Dave? Uh, that's a uh, poblano. 
um, you can use a big Serrano if you can't find a Poblano. Um, they're both about the same heat. They're not really that hot. Um, no, that one's a mess, but that's okay. Um, so, can you put any of that um, marinade on top on sure. the other side? Yeah. I, I like excess, I like shoes and jewelry, like accessories, and I feel the same about sauces. And I feel like, you know, the more sauce, the better. So I'm like, put all that sauce back on. The seitan looks wonderful. How are you feeling about that pepper? It's looking good. Oh yeah, it looks good. Okay. I think the main thing with the pepper is, um, it probably doesn't have to cook a whole long, a whole lot of time. It's really just heating up what's inside it. Um, so as soon as that cheese starts to melt and the seitan's already cooked, probably pretty good. Cool. Um, then it's just to how hot do you like your food temperature wise? Let's not check the same Sure. 178. Okay, yeah, we're probably we're in good shape. So will you move that up to the top? Yep, let's move those and then I'll move the pepper around. I'll put the veggies Okay. In. Do you see how I'm micromanaging? This is our life. No, this is my life. This is this, <laughs> this is because I'm living my best life. <laughs> um, okay, sorry. Uh, what is Dave's band's name? Antivirus. Antivirus. Ironic timing, am I right? No, it it looks like it's heavy metal. It's not. It's surf punk um, with a couple rock covers, but it's a lot of surfer tunes. Um, uh, the owner of the company lived in Hawaii, in San Diego, and um, so yeah. Um, What's happening? What do you hear? Nothing. Okay, do you want to start? When do we yep. want to put the veggies now? The veggies now. No, is this going to close okay? Uh, it will, but I don't want that on there right now. Okay. Got, I got to get the oil out of there. So. I was going to go like that, but okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, here, yeah. Smarty. Here, do you mind it? Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. Let me act like I'm doing something. Talk to the people. Talk she's to the people. working. Oh, okay. I can't believe she's working. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, this is what happens when she does a cookbook. Um, she goes in the kitchen, does food prep, does a recipe, destroys the kitchen. Um, I go in and clean the kitchen. She goes and makes edits and then she comes back and destroys the kitchen. Again. So all of this is true. That's my life. Uh, yes. So, um, so the good news with veggies, same thing as the pepper. You don't, you don't have to cook them a long time. Um, you don't want them to turn to mush. They want, you want them to be crisp. You want them to, um, to, to not be just this, this gooey mass of stuff. We're, we're not caramelizing the onions here. We just want them to just be warm um, and a nice side. Uh, and if you're wondering why I'm taking so long to do this, it's because I did use a smidge of oil with the balsamic and I just didn't want to dump this in and have a fire. Yes. It seems like a really bad idea. Yeah, um, going back to what I was saying before, um, if you're marinating things, balsamic's fine. I mean, it's going to smoke and steam and spit when it hits the, the elements. But, um, yeah, a lot of oil hitting those hot elements. Um, have your fire extinguisher ready, I guess. Um, so, I moved the seitan steaks up to the top shelf. Yes, I'm taking a picture. Um, amazing. The tofu steaks are looking good. Um, yeah. We're doing good. So, do you guys have questions? Um, is the oil necessary? No, it's not necessary. Um, you know, if you cook oil free, use whatever techniques you use. Um, I like the balsamic um, is the main ingredient for me for the marinade with the vegetables. And uh, we used red pepper flakes, basil and oregano and some kosher salt. And then I just drizzled a little oil because I wanted a little textural difference in what we were eating today. Because sometimes kind of like in the same way, like if you eat beans, greens and grains and hippie bowls all the time, you're eating like a soft bean and a soft rice. And sometimes you just kind of want a little variety. So in the same way, we're gonna have this grilled seitan and tofu. So I thought by adding a little oil to the, thank you, to the zucchini or to the yellow squash, it might add a little texture and crunch. Oh, that's oh, delicious. <laughs> that's good. It's really hot. Mm. So that was a good question, Linda. Hope that answered your question. Um, yes, it's a poblano pepper. Did the tofu stick? No, the no. tofu's in great shape. I did, again, um, talking about oil, I did oil the grates. I put um, some olive oil on, I put some olive oil just I on a washcloth. Yeah. Um, after the grates were a little warm, I, I just kind of got this pretty moist and wiped the grates down. Um, you could do it beforehand. You could probably use like a, a spray, a pam, whatever. Um, but you, you're gonna wanna oil the grates a little bit just to keep things from sticking. It's um, like he knew there was a piece of squash on the floor. 
He's been barking. Oh, dear. Um, and also That's remember, funny. so sometimes when you do want to get creative with um, not using oil or with the sticking, you got to be careful with this grill, right? We have an open flame. So if you're like, well, I don't want to use oil, so I think I'll use parchment paper, your parchment paper could get on catch on fire. Yep. So you do want to start thinking about safe ways to do that. And like I said, it could be using uh, a basket like what, what we're using to hold the, the squash just so that it's got sort of that extra layer. Um, I wondered if you were gonna do that. Uh, the pepper is looking amazing. Oh, and yeah. the timer's done. Are, are, do you feel like the tofu and the seitan are yeah, done? that's why it's all clear. Okay. That's probably not done. But no, well, that's gonna be hot, that was not done. Yeah, it's definitely not. Do, I'm, gonna do, close it? Yep, okay. I'm gonna do a couple. Uh, I didn't find out this way. I did the pineapple ones. Yeah, do the pineapple ones. Right on there. We just thought we wanted the reason we we chose some of the things we did today was because um, so I'm going to shut the timer off. Are we good? Yeah, we're totally okay. good. Is to show you different kinds of things you can make on the grill. So you can you work on your protein by doing a seitan or a tofu. You could do um, you could do veggie burgers, of course, and bean burgers. Um, they, there might be some sticking issues. We in the past have had some that uh, do fine. What is that? That sauce is so good. It is. Oh, I know. It's oh, from my book, The Vegan Air Fryer. Is it really? No. Is that what I made today? <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> then we wanted to show you some vegetables. And you know, vegetables are going to cook at different times. And we were actually, at one point, I was like, we're going to map everything out. And we're going to say, this goes on at this time, and it takes us long. But the thing is, that's not how we grill. And it's probably not how you grill either. You start putting things on, and you keep checking it until it's done. And so you're seeing that in, like within 20 minutes, we're going to have a beautiful meal that's got um, our seitan, our tofu, we've got veggies, we've got our stuffed pepper, we're using a little vegan cheese. And then these pineapple, ooh, and I'm gonna bring that sauce out in here too, that's exciting. I want it, I want that to char a little bit. Um, and the pineapple, I just wanted to show you, it's a great way to bring um, fruit in too. Okay, so I'm actually gonna to talk to you a little bit about, no surprise, umami, which there was an entire class, vegan umami, check it out on, on my website, JL Goes Vegan, or check out YouTube. And even with fruit, grilling it brings out a little umami and umami is that meatiness and that sense of a feeling um you know a sense of satiety when you eat and savory <laughs> sorry you're so funny um, um should i get a spoon for that um will you get a spoon for that okay so um so when even when you add just like a slice of pineapple but you guys you could take peaches like later in the summer when peaches start to get really ripe and yummy just cut it in half get that pit out and when you're almost done grilling put a little cinnamon and i would say even a little cayenne pepper do not talk to me like that harry oh my goodness you're just the worst um put a little cayenne pepper or a little cinnamon on your peach halves and then just put your peach half on a hot grill for just like 30 seconds or a minute and it just makes it juicy, brings out a whole new level of flavor. You can even drizzle a little balsamic on, on that. You can put apple slices on the grill. Um, you can put cherries in this, uh, in this grill basket like we're using for the squash and then just have some cherries that are nice and hot. And then remember, I think I mentioned to you a couple classes ago that when men eat cooked, tomatoes twice a week their chance of getting um, prostate cancer reduces and yep. so you can just take a fresh tomato this summer from your garden and slice it and right before you right, everything else on the grill is done put those big thick round slices of tomatoes on the grill drizzle a thick balsamic vinegar or drizzle some of that fruited vinegar we did in the vegan umami class and then just grill it for 30 seconds and it just makes the tomatoes pop um how are we doing eating in about three minutes. Three minutes. I'm so excited. Okay, I'm going to stop and, and take some questions. Oh, Harry, Renee says hello. Um, I don't have any oil in my house. We'll have to buy a small bottle. Only if you want, Linda. And you know, honestly, you can also just get, this is the spray I usually use when Dave and I are cooking. Dave tends to grab this bottle. I tend to grab this and just try to use the, the minimum that I need to make it work for the flavor I want and or the sticking. And so if you didn't want to buy a bottle of oil because you don't really use it that much and you just want to have a little help, you could just do a spray bottle and put it on a cloth and then wipe it down. Or since it's a spray bottle, you could spray it on the grates, but don't turn the, the grill on right away, right? So just spray it, let it sit for a few minutes, and then turn it on just so you don't have anything flammable happening. But um, so just getting a very simple can of um, 
some olive oil or canola oil or even avocado oil might be the way just to help you a little bit with that. Uh, let's see. Oh, you guys saw Harry sniffing around. That's hilarious. Um, and Renee, I showed you Harry. Uh, corn on the cob. Yeah, corn on the cob mm -hmm. is delicious. We do it all the time. We um, just made it last weekend. The only reason we didn't is because we wanted to show you a bunch of other things. Um, but we corn on the cob is our jam on the grill. And if you just leave it in the husk, usually about 20 minutes is fine. Although sometimes we'll take the husk off and I'll actually um, quickly put it in the instant pot for zero minutes. And then we'll add like maybe a little vegan butter and some, um, some chili powder and some salt and pepper, and then just put it on the grill for about 10 minutes. And that's super delicious too. Yeah. Well, I said the instant pot, so oh, that takes right. care yeah, of the soaking. Yeah, yeah. Some people soak it first and you know, I'm lazy. So why not just put it in the instant pot for zero minutes? Is that thunder or that's an thunder. airplane? That's thunder. Wow. We good thing. We're going to be eating soon. Okay. It's one thirty. Um, where do you purchase your vinegar? Just at the regular grocery store. I mean, at, we go to King Supers, which is a Kroger. Um, I think you're in Florida, Linda, so Publix. Um, I love Publix. My parents winter down there. Um, chili lime seasoning sounds delicious on grilled corn. Yep. Uh, is Harry vegan? Oh, the loaded question. Huh. Nope, he's not. Um, and, you know, all of his snacks are, but uh, he's not yet. And my vet is an ethical vegan like I am. And... He said that he'll work with me on that when we think the time is right, but he's young and he wants him to, um, anyway, um, so no, my dog is not vegan, nor is my cat. My cat will never be vegan. Um, rosemary with corn sounds amazing. Um, okay. Other questions about what we have on the grill? How are Can things going, Jake? Yeah, why not? Do a Jamie Oliver style. Does anybody here watch that Jamie Oliver show? What's Gotta it called? 15 Minute 15 Meals. 15 Minute Meals. Um, Gotta get down on that. <clears throat> If you, okay, wait, then Patty, you're going to love what we're about to do. Dave is obsessed with the way Jamie serves his food when it's totally. done. And um, so I told him to, uh, when I was in the shower today, I went out for a hike this morning. And when I was in the shower, I was like, oh my God, I have the perfect idea of how we're going to show all of this grilled food. And Dave's Jamie Oliver dreams are about to come true. Yep. Are you ready? Almost. Wait, yeah, put yep, that, get on. that on. There. Yeah, you do it. You want to put it on anything? Oh, yeah, totally. Okay. And so you guys, the class is actually going to end pretty soon because we just made lunch and we're going to eat this while it's hot. So this is one of our fastest classes. So really, this is the time. Although, you know what we will do? We'll stir some plates and maybe sit down and yeah. talk with our mouths full and answer some questions too. Um, but are there any questions about what we've grill it, grilled or are there some vegan things that you want to grill? Do you feel like it's ready? I'm going to yeah. move that off because yeah. I think it's prettier without. Okay, you guys, Dave's big moment. <laughs> His Jamie Oliver moment. Are you ready? So here is Lunch our is grilled feast. Check it out. I'm going to take a picture of this. Um, anybody want to ask any questions while we're doing this? We would love to answer them. Okay, so here we have again. We have uh, grilled tofu. We have grilled seitan. So this is homemade seitan. And the tofu... We are marinated both in a very spicy marinade. Um, it's from my sambal goreng, uh, tempeh goreng recipe in the vegan air fryer. Simple grilled pineapple. This is, oh, slice mm. this pepper so that they can see what this looks like. This yep. is a poblano pepper stuffed with ground seitan that we made last week. And we have some vegan cheese in there. Uh, oh, yeah, there we go. Can you guys see it okay? Give me, like, I can't see you right now, so... Uh, let me know. And then there's the okay, zucchini yeah. or yeah, the yellow squash. So it's all melty and gooey in there. That's all perfect. Goodness. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So any questions about vegan grilling? We actually might wrap this class up early. Um, if you want us to sit and eat in front of you and answer questions, we're happy to. You can let us know. Um, I guess the thing that I would want to know the most is, did this help you? Like if you're new to vegan or you're new to, need, new to vegan grilling, do you feel like you have enough information. We kind of talked more about the food than the grilling process. Um, I know that Dave said, um, oh, someone's, uh, Patty's never thought of grilling tofu. Can you do pizza on the grill? Take it, Dave. Yes. Um, we Meanwhile, we're going to do this. this. No, yeah, get it, get down on that. Um, I have done pizza on the grill, uh, and it is amazeballs. Um, and there is a huge, there, there was a huge fear factor, uh, the first time, um, with the dough. Is that going to stick? I oiled the grates down just like I did today. Um, and when I 
had the dough. Um, there's always a little bit of oil on the dough when I let it rise. I put it in an oil bowl anyways. I stretched it. I just threw it on there. Didn't put any ingredients on it yet. Oh, you just glopped all over your laptop. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I'll take that as a good sign. Um, don't put the toppings on yet. Let it just cook for three or four minutes until it just starts to firm up on the bottom. It will slide up. Oil the top, flip it, and then put all your toppings on and shut the grill door. And in seven to 10 minutes, depending on how hot your grill is, you'll have pizza. Uh, it, it, but it, it take, the, the dough takes on a whole new flavor when it's over fire. It's fantastic. It's really delicious. Highly recommend. I'm going to start going through some of these questions. You have to eat this. This yeah. is so, this pepper is really hot. I kind of want to cry <laughs> and also keep eating it. Um, okay. Let's see. Oh, so Lisa's going to do the seitan. Let me know what you think of the steaks. I'm excited to get into that. I'm so sorry I'm eating. Um, oh, Sharon, we got our grill. Where did we get it? Home Depot? Home Depot. And we went to Home Depot because we just wanted a small one since mm. it's just the two of us. Isn't it delicious? Oh I know God. you're really happy, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, haven't grilled that much. Exactly. When we went vegan, we didn't, well, even, we didn't even get it, have a grill. It was like, what are we going to do? It's vegan. We have nothing to grill. And we finally got a grill a couple of years ago before it died last summer and got much better about it. And now we, this, um, during the pandemic, we started doing this um, weekly produce delivery. And so now every time we get something, I'm like, oh my God, this would be amazing to grill. Asparagus is fantastic on a grill. And you can definitely do the asparagus directly mm -hmm. on the grates, right? Because you can do it long ways. Um, but sometimes you can kind of lose them. So I tend to do garlic. Uh, I'll, I'll marinate lemon juice and garlic with the asparagus and then put them yep. in the basket, which works really great. This tofu is amazeballs. Um, oh, I want to try it. Go so ahead, someone asked how long we did the tofu for. How long did mm, we do it? Maybe 10 minutes. I want to get um, some Maybe a little bit longer. Too. I flipped it. Um, so maybe five minutes aside. The seitan probably went There's seven or eight minutes aside. Some of that green sauce too. Um, you know, and tofu's, the same thing with tofu is with the seitan. You just want to get it hot enough oh that it's temperature-wise to your likings. It's already cooked, right? So, I mean, technically, you could eat tofu right out of the box, mm -hmm. which I've done. Um, so you just got to get it hot. Uh, that's it. Mm. Um, that's all. Mm. So mm. maybe maybe 10 minutes, five minutes aside. Oh. Um, I know. Because Lisa says, I'm hearing a new cookbook, vegan grilling. Actually, I think there is one. Um, there are, I think so. Is it John, Is it Jonathan Schlimm? who did the Tipsy Vegan, the, the cookbook with um, cocktail drinks. I think he mm. did a vegan grilling book. So his is really good. Uh, let's see. Is that extra firm tofu? I don't know if we did firm or extra firm today, truth be told, because I bought both this week. I'm not really sure. Don't know. Um, Usually but I, for things like this, we do firmer. Yeah, I wouldn't firm. do anything less than firm, yeah. for sure. Um, a grill pan for the stove top. Yeah, these recipes will absolutely work, Beverly. Um, you guys may recall the week that I did the spring vegetable class, I grilled mm. some romaine lettuce on a cast iron skillet. It's a cast iron grill skillet and it works great. And it all is gonna go back to your time, maybe, is that the same time? Oh yeah, you gotta get down on that. Seriously. You're welcome. Shut up. That was my <laughs> idea. That was my idea. I was like, we have to make a seitan steak. Which, speaking of seitan steaks, even though we just made this from scratch, uh, what are we doing next weekend, Dave? Oh, uh, ahead. Show of hands, who's heard of the herbivorous butcher? Yeah, and is Laura here? Laura is their major um, marketing PR person. The herbivorous butcher. They're based out of Minneapolis. Um, they've been on Food Network, uh, my favorite show, Diners, Drive-ins, and Dives. Um, so it's a brother and sister duo. Uh, they make. They have a storefront. It is a a, a, a butchery but it's all plant-based. It's seitan, it's sausages, it's uh, nut-based cheeses. Um, when, you can go online, um, just, just Google them, herbivorous butcher. I think it's herbivorous well, with a V, not an F. Um, and they will send you on dry ice uh, via like two-day delivery, three-day delivery. Um, different packs, um, we're getting um, sausages, steaks. What else is in there? I don't know, you are. No, 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 but it's, it's all, this will be fired up next weekend. Um, but yeah, you got to check them out. 
Um, they make great stuff. Uh, when JL had a radio show, we interviewed them. Great, great pair, great personalities, and they're doing they're just doing good stuff. Uh, it's 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 fantastic. Um, Renee brought up a great idea: soy curls. You can totally grill in that basket. Yep. Like we used for the squash, that would be absolutely amazing. And to have some soy curls with a little char, little mm -hmm. grill line would be super cool. Um, oh, and then Joni's letting you guys know that Pampered Chef has an indoor outdoor grill. Um, link to forks. Oh, that's funny. Honestly, we just have a zillion bamboo forks because I like to keep them in my backpack when we go out so that we don't use utensils, especially now with the pandemic. If we go out anywhere, we're going to places that have outdoor eating and then we just bring our own bamboo silverware. So I honestly have no idea. I've just collected them over the years. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> So what did I want to make sure we talked about? Mm. So I know we're so happy. We're going to sit down here and eat in a minute. So, um, <laughs> but uh, if you have questions, oh, someone, did you just push back a little beer? Who's the, Cheryl, are you having a, a beer with me today? Right on girl. There you go. Um, and whoever's having soda or kombucha or whatever. And by the way, this is really delicious. This is um, Citradelic Tangerine IPA. Perfect. Cause it's actually very hot out here right now. Um, so a couple things that I wanted to I can't believe I like the squash. I know we did not you I've confessed that over the last several weeks like summer squash zucchini didn't used to be my, my jam. No. His either. But just onion, wow. balsamic vinegar, the summer squash, the yellow summer squash cut into medallions, base dried basil, dried oregano, dried red crushed pepper. I added the pepper because everything else had so much spice going to it. But I got to tell you this what Dave made today and maybe I'll get him to um jot down the recipe and I'll share it when I put the video up in a couple of days. But this is super fresh and it's a great way to, you know, like we said, eat with our eyes first. Here, will you move your beer for a minute? So look at how beautiful the seitan and the tofu look with the char marks. They're cooked beautifully, deep red. And then we've got this splash of green color from this fresh, very fresh, okay, salsa. <laughs> Almost like a salsa that Dave made with peppers and with... Um, basil and so we'll put that recipe too because it's just a fun thing to dollop i mean frankly the rest of this squash i think i'm just going to toss it up and some of this is actually very hot and spicy though um so let's see herbivorous butcher yep someone just put that down um thank you for that we did press the tofu and some of you know that i like to freeze my tofu then thaw it and then press it but we actually didn't do that with this one we just got it um from our grocery delivery a couple of days ago so this is just tofu that was water packed in the fridge hadn't been frozen pressed it for like maybe 10 minutes before we um, did the marinade so nothing too crazy and um oh thank you catherine for sharing that link to the herbivorous butcher and um let me just drop a few more links if you guys want to um support the new digital green book so that communities of color can travel safely uh, around this country and be welcomed in communities all over you can support their GoFundMe campaign I'm really excited about what these two women are doing and I'm and just gonna stand here and eat it's I know totally fine. and then um, let's see I'm gonna drop oh remember Demetria from uh, redefine your mind uh, she has these great vegan delicious t-shirts so don't forget that and don't forget that vegan baking for beginners is coming out and um what what's happening did i miss the donut segment um no no was there going to be a donut segment what did we miss oh it's raining oh my gosh and my laptop is out here and my monitor's out here so okay so um but we're under an umbrella we're fine, we're fine. i'm not gonna we're freak good. out nope, don't. um okay it's fine and so if you want to leave a tip you are welcome to and then mm -hmm. i'm just going to remind you about a um how is there going to be a donut segment in a grilling class? I thought there was a chocolate donut making donuts in the email. No, I gave you the recipe in the email. <laughs> um, so in the email that went out this week, I announced this week's class, which is vegan grilling, which we just did. And then I also gave, shared with you the donut recipe for um, the dark chocolate donuts in my book, Vegan um, Big baking for beginners but no we're no we're not grilling them yet no, not grilling but that sounds like a really good idea good but speaking of that I, I mentioned it before and i'll just recap so the next class we're taking next weekend off uh so on july 12th i'll be coming to you from illinois dave will be joining us from here in colorado springs and we'll be focusing on the vegan baking 101 and i'm going to help you, you want to bring them out yeah, exactly. um 
we're going to help you like veganize. Like I'm going to suggest that you guys kind of come prepared with some of your favorite family baking recipes. And then through the class, we can brainstorm different ways to veganize them. And I'll be making a date pudding. I'm going to be making a um, aquafaba whipped cream to go on top. Then we're going to veganize some cookies that we're going to take over to my dad. We're doing social distancing visiting with my dad while I'm back. And then on July 20th, the next weekend I'll be driving back. I'm not flying because I don't want to make anybody sick. Um, uh, so we'll take that weekend off. And then starting July 26th, it will be, the class is going to be uh, summer soups. So we're going to do a gazpacho. And hey, that's ridiculous. He's obnoxious. Will you pick him up, please? He's ridiculous. Um, he wants to say tan. Uh, so we're going to be making a gazpacho soup, which is a no-cook, just fruits and veggies um, <laughs> soup in a blender. But then we're going to make some yummy cauliflower creamy soup. This could be really easy. And that's when I'm going to launch my pay what you can. So you can pay $0, $2, $5, $10, whatever you want. So that's the plan coming up. And I'm just going to look to see if there are any last minute questions. Um, you said something almost making me donuts in the email. Oh my gosh, are we still, you guys, I'm so sorry. There are no donuts today. I really don't believe that I told you we were making donuts. If I did, I'm really, really sorry. I sent out an email about the vegan grilling class and I shared the dark chocolate donuts recipe in my book. I apologize if you came here wanting the chocolate donuts. I can't say anything else except I'm sorry you're disappointed. Um, okay. So with that, <laughs> um, thank you for your love. I send you the love back. You guys, we're going to wrap it up. We got a little rain happening and we're going to get our food in and we're going to eat all the food. And I can't wait to see you in two weeks. But you know, you can find me on Instagram. I'm JL Goes Vegan and you can find me on my website and I'll still be sending out some emails. So I'm going to do what I always do, which is I want to take a look at you. If I can get my mouse up here, this is a little trickier than normal. And so maybe, oh yeah, I'm going to be able to do it. So I'm going to look at your faces. So if your camera's off and you want to say hi, um, there we go. And then I think I'm going to try to make it so you can talk. I'm going to unmute all. But I think if you want to say something, you have, can you make that get unmute all? I can't get the mouse to go over there. Um, sorry, YouTube people, because we're trying to go there. Yeah. So I've unmuted you now. So if you want to unmute yourself, you can say goodbye um, as we go. So then I can hear your voices. Bye, so it's you. great Bye. seeing you. I love seeing you every week. You're awesome. YouTube, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Say hello to the faces of everybody. Bye, I'm going to scroll through. You guys are wonderful. Thanks for coming back every week. I appreciate you. And we will see you in two weeks. And just to manage expectations in two weeks, it's Vegan Baking 101. And we'll be making a Two things and um, not donuts, not gonna lie, we're not making so, um, okay. So, I'll see you guys soon and uh, have a beautiful, beautiful trip. trip.